brought to you by PrayLatin.com, makers of prayer cards featuring complete English phonetic renderings of Latin pronunciations. One of the more pressing issues the Synod on Synodality is facing now is the question of women and their role in the church. Pretty much every national conference of bishops in the Western world reports that at the very least, a sizable portion of the allegedly Catholic population of their di dioceses and countries want the sacrament of holy orders opened up to women. Some national bishops' conferences are openly calling for the ordination of women to the priesthood, and in so doing admit that they don't agree with the timeless teachings of the church on this topic, which goes back to the apostles and to, the, to our Lord himself. Today I have for you an interview by an otherwise obscure Croatian outlet that had a chance to interview Cardinal Hollerich and ask him about the Synod on Synodality. And he eventually gets to the point where he's basically replaced sacred tradition with the whims of the sitting pope, even if that pope conflicts with the declarations by his predecessors that are widely thought to be infallible. The question at hand is this, was John Paul II acting with papal infallibility when he upheld the traditional teachings and limitations on the sacrament of holy orders, and who can become a priest? Most scholars say that yes, he was for a variety of reasons. There's arguments all over the place about this for, again, a whole host of different arguments. But they'll come back to infallibility, yes. Now, Hollerich doesn't appear to agree with that assessment, as we'll see here. But he also reveals how the modernists view the church. The Catholic view is that the Eucharist is sort of the central sacrament, which all other sacraments point to in some way or another, that the Eucharist is the point of unity along with the papacy. Hollerich rejects this for the Protestant view of the unity of the church through baptism pretty much alone. The article comes from, again, a Croatian news outlet, and I'm not going to butcher their name with my classic mispronunciation of things here. I'm not even going to try, but they ran this headline from their interview with Cardinal Hollerich. Cardinal Jean-Claude Hollerich on synodal challenges, the woman question, and the disputes with church teaching. The Holy Spirit sometimes generates great confusion to bring new harmony. Okay, first, Cardinal Hollerich, who's from Luxembourg, is the Relator General of the Synod on Synodality, a title bestowed upon him by Francis. That title gives him the authority to essentially be the co-head of the Synod on Synodality, along with Cardinal Mario Gresh, who both serve as Francis's men on the council and direct it as he sees fit. Second, he, meaning Cardinal Hollerich, says in this interview that the Holy Spirit generates confusion to bring new harmony. Here's what sacred scripture says about where confusion comes from. St. Paul says in 1 Corinthians that God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. St. Paul says confusion does not come from God. But Cardinal Hollerich says that confusion does come from God. Now, there's a rhetorical question here, but who are you going to trust on this one? Maybe his God, Cardinal Hollerich's God, is the author of confusion, and maybe he's admitting to something here. I'll leave the uh, judgment up to you on that score. But how do we know that synodality and even the German synodal way come from God? Here comes Cardinal Hollerich with the answer. So, from his article, quote, it is the Holy Spirit who makes the charisma and the hierarchy come together in the person of Peter's successor. That is why I am sure if the Pope points in a direction, it is the direction the Church must take. And the Pope pointed in the synodal direction. Synodality does not replace the ministry of Peter, and it does not replace the role of the bishops. Yet all of the baptized are sons and daughters of God. All the baptized are adoptive brothers and sisters of Christ. Therefore, the Holy Spirit undoubtedly speaks through them. This is our discernment material, and we cannot abstract from it just because we may not like it, but we may take it even further. Sometimes even being wrong does indicate a lack of the Spirit. End quote. And then he rambles a bit about how the Jesuits were founded by people who wanted to go to the Holy Land but couldn't and ended up in Rome instead, where the Society of Jesus was founded, as 
if that points in some weird way to evidence of confusion coming from God. Cardinal Hollerick then rambles a bit more about the Christocentricity of the synodal view of the church before the de declaring that the church and the synodal view of the faith are inclusive of Protestantism. Meanwhile, the Vatican continues to declare traditional Catholics as, frankly, enemies of the church. He says that the key sacrament for unity in the church is baptism. And while certainly baptism is a sign of unity, he sort of rejects the idea that it's not participation in the Eucharistic ministry, which is a Protestant view of the church, not a Catholic one. So, from the interview, quote, Yes, I do not just aim at Catholics, but all of the baptized. In the church, we have cherished a theology centered on communion, expressed especially in receiving communion in the Holy Eucharist. This Eucharistic spirit is also why the first dimension of the synod is communion. Yet baptism is the fundamental sacrament from which all of the sacraments proceed. This is what we mean when we confess in the creed that we believe in one baptism, but this is a message one can easily read from our baptistries, such as the one in your cathedral and split. It means that the synod should make us feel incomplete. We must experience the painful separation from the rest of our baptized brothers and sisters. Therefore, at the beginning of the synodal assembly in Rome, we shall have a tizit moment in which the Pope will be joined in prayer by the Patriarch of Constantinople and other Christian leaders. It is the first time a, a successor of Peter will ask other Christians to pray for the synod of the Catholic Church. End quote. So, yes, it's not too much to say that the synod is an evil council of the ape of the church creating a new religion. This is nothing you would have ever seen in the history of the church. Cardinal Hollerick has told us before that the church is open to changing everything. And after a while, you have to ask the basic question. How much can you change things before the changes to the faith amount to a new faith? How long before they admit they're not Catholic? I've seen some people recently say that Francis and his coterie of modernists in Rome haven't done or said anything heretical, and I beg to differ. Just look at what they're doing in the Synod on Synodality, and you'll get all the proof you really need to see that they are very much changing as much as they possibly can things in the church. That they are that's why I call it apostate Rome for I call it that for a reason. And there are no limits either. As Cardinal Hollerick tells us when first expounding on the need to be more inclusive of women in the church, but also remembering that the church does not condone the ordination of women to the priesthood. He repeats several times in the build-up to what you're going to hear next that he's not arguing for the ordination of women. He repeats himself over and over and over again on that score because he wants to make sure you understand that he's not arguing for that. But then he argues that a pope can change that teaching because John Paul II wasn't, according to his view, invoking infallibility when declaring against exactly that in the 1990s. It's worth noting that John Paul II didn't need to invoke papal infallibility to knock that entire idea down because he was just reiterating the constant and timeless teaching of the church. And in so doing, he shouldn't have to invoke infallibility to defend the sacrament of holy orders against the progressive mindset rocking the church in our time. Infallibility is usually invoked when trying to clarify a pre-existing teaching, but he didn't need to clarify anything. The church's teaching was clear. He just repeated it. But Hollerick tells us that this can change too, and it implies that it probably will. And this next part is a back and forth rapid question and response between his interviewer and Cardinal Hollerick. And in so doing, he destroys the entire modernist project. He actually says what we as rad trads have been saying about Vatican II, that much of the documents of Vatican II conflict with what came before. Except he, he points to it as an example of how even seemingly infallible teachings can be tossed out the window at the whims of a sitting pope. Quote, The interviewer asks, You present the ordination of women as purely a matter of prudential judgment. To which Hollerick responds, It is the Holy Father who has to decide about it. The interviewer responds, but can he decide against what St. John Paul II wrote in Ordinatio Sacerdotalis? Hollerick's response is, with time, yes. The interviewer, is this not infallible teaching? Hollerick responds, I am not sure you could call it so. 
Probably not. Infallible would be, for instance, the proclamation of the dogma of the Assumption of Mary by Pius XII. The interviewer asks, We are pressing this because the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith published two documents clarifying that Ordinatio Sacerdotalis, John Paul II's declaration on the subject, was infallible teaching. Hollerick responds, The syllabus of errors of Pius IX had a similar claim to infallibility. But if you look at the syllabus, you will see Pius IX condemned many things which are now common practice in the church. To which the interviewer responds, And you think it is the same with the impossibility of ordaining women. To which Hollerick says, It surely is a true teaching for its time, and we cannot just push it aside. But I think there might be some space to expand the teaching, to see which of the arguments of Pope John Paul II could be developed. But for the moment, if Pope Francis tells me it's not an option, it's not an option. The interviewer responds, If this is so, how can we ever certainly know if a pope is right in his teaching? Good question. <laughs> to which Hollerick says, There is no way you could strictly go against the pope's teaching, yet sometimes there is a development in thought which can lead to different conclusions. But if I were the one to jump to those conclusions, it would be preposterous. It is the whole church together with Peter that must acknowledge there was a development. <laughs> End quote. He just destroyed Vatican II, essentially, with that. Now he goes on and discusses the James Martin sin. He flat out says the church's teaching on that sin is wrong and that St. Paul and the people of his time didn't understand the issue of the James Martin sin and that we moderns know better. This, folks, is the man Francis made his co-chair of the Synod on Synodality. And while he didn't say St. Paul was wrong and that we know better in such explicit terms, it's what he was saying. What Hollerick is pushing is the hyper-papalist, nonsensical position that treats a pope as an oracle from God, chosen by God, and who can change anything he wants. God, God doesn't choose the pope. That is a modern concept. That is a modern thing that you, if you had said that to any Catholic before 100 years ago, they would have thought you were nuts. But that's what he's doing here. This should concern anyone with any sense watching this because this man clearly is a heretic. There simply is no way of getting around that. But I have to ask Cardinal Hollerick a very basic question. Why not? Why not just push for the changes to the Sacrament of Holy Orders? Why not just push for throwing out the entire moral teachings of the Catholic Church? It's been something people have been trying to do for decades. And the German synodal way is absolutely disturbing to watch unfold. But you have to admit one thing with it that the German bishops are being much more honest with everyone than Hollerick, Francis, and the rest of them are. Francis just said that the Holy Spirit is guiding the German synodal way, so he won't intervene to stop them. He said that, as reported by a pillar Catholic. So why not follow their lead if they're being led by the Holy Ghost? After all, who are you to object to the Holy Ghost movements? Uh, and I, on top of that, as I'll talk about more later this week, Francis and Cardinal Roche have said repeatedly that the theology of the church changed at Vatican II, which is a fancy way of saying that the faith changed. Why not just embrace change fully? Just be honest, Cardinal Hollerick, and admit that what you're doing all up, what you're up to really here is foisting a new Protestant denomination on the Catholic Church, and you just want the pretty buildings. If you admit that, I will respect you more for it. You'd be admitting to being a heretic and a schismatic, though, so that won't happen. But now I have to ask you what you think about this. Is Cardinal Hollerick more than a little bit of a heretic? Is his view of the Pope being able to change whatever he wants correct, or is he acting like some kind of papal relativist by saying that something is true when John Paul II said it, but it isn't necessarily true now because Francis might say something different? Let me know in the comments. Please like and subscribe if you haven't. It does help. Sharing this on social media helps a lot, too. As always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.